Welcome everybody to this webinar as part of ALP Annual Winter Conference. Just before we hand over to our presenter, Teresa McKinnon, I want to welcome you all very warmly and also remind you that the session is being recorded, that the hashtag for the session is hash at sorry, hash old C. And also I want to thank you all for participating and thanks our sponsors for supporting the event. Just as a reminder, this is how you use the interface and we've already checked that everybody can hear us and also how to raise your hand. If you have any questions during the webinar, please do that or we'll post it in the chat window and we'll try our best to answer all your questions. The format for this session today is 30 minutes in total duration that includes time for questions and I'm sure Teresa will make it very interactive. But for now, I am going to hand over to Teresa to start her presentation on Thinking Spaces, Mahara as a Domain of UI. Teresa, a very warm welcome to you. Please do get us underway. Thank you. Thanks very much and welcome everybody and thank you for um, sharing where you're coming from. Those of you who've typed into the text chat, it's really helpful and it's really helpful just to, to maintain that level of interactivity because um, I'm going to be thinking and talking about thinking spaces, but I wish to do that. Obviously, I can only do that from my perspective, and I wish to do that collaboratively with you. So the more you can uh, uh, contribute to the discussion, uh, the better the discussion will be, no doubt. I'm going to put my video off because there seems to be a significant lag, and <laughs> it rather looks like uh, you know you're speaking with. Uh, your, your vent, a ventriloquist dummy there, so I'm going to put that off. <laughs> and uh, let's work through our topic here of thinking spaces. Now, I don't know about you, and I'd be interested to know um, wherever you are, where do you go when you just need time to think? You need a bit of quiet time. Is there somewhere in the house where you can shut the door? Is it the bathroom with the candles and the bath full? Where do you go when you just need time to stop and think? Ah, oh, yes, Adam. Yes, and what a lovely place to, to take a wander through nature down in Southampton there. And going for a drive. Ah, oh, oh, that takes me back. That takes me back to when my children were little and they wouldn't go to sleep. <laughs> that was the quickest way of getting them off to sleep. Walking the dog, riding the horse, Isabel. Great to see you here too. Yes, I, I certainly used to uh, do that when I was younger. I used to ride myself and that's great for getting away from things and, and thinking things through, mulling things over. So most of us know how to sort of find somewhere where we can perhaps just take stock and refresh and uh, think about what we're doing. But mostly, the institutional spaces that we, we provide in higher education and in schools and elsewhere are not really based on giving you space to think. They're more based around the institutional needs of connecting you with your resources. So they tend to be focused on the push mechanisms we require in order to push out the slides or the reading, um, to tell you when your deadlines are, um, to send mass communication to a group or to uh, allow a group to connect and have discussions through fora, um, perhaps to uh, administrate tests and quizzes and learning activities or just to provide a kind of virtual post box. So and it, to me, as I sort of was thinking about this several years ago when I was responsible for thinking about the sort of virtual learning environment we would want to have available for our language learners, it struck me that the focus wasn't greatly on learning, it was greatly on teaching and the various processes that we associate with teaching. Um, and it's for that reason that I started to think at that point how we were going to uh, facilitate some private spaces for our students uh, where they could reflect, where they could um, perhaps connect in different ways and think about their learning in a way that wasn't 
constantly surveilled in a way where they could actually find a bit of peace and quiet. So I don't know about you, and certainly from the responses in the chat, um, most of us like to get away from things if we're going to stop and think and have any any meaningful reflection um, and have a sort of a bit of quiet time. Um, so it was at that point that I started to investigate the possibilities that were off offered at the time um, for integrating Mahara within Moodle. And we very quickly became a Mahoodle. Um, so Mahoodle is the technical name, perhaps, <laughs> for a Mahara, uh, a Moodle that is connected and integrated with, with um, Moodle. Um, and what particularly struck me was actually there were other people out there. I'm a, I'm a big Twitter user, uh, user and my personal um, learning network were, were showing me that other people were thinking about whether we recognize the importance of allowing people to reflect and to go to places to reflect. Now, I'm going to be putting some uh, links here into the text chat area. I'm going to be passing out quite a lot of links. So I'll just put a couple into, into the text chat there. But I just want to point out, if you uh, come to the file menu at the very top left-hand corner of your screen, you can actually use save and save the chat. So at the end of the session, if you want to have access to these links, you'll be able to download them all at the same time. So just, uh, just so that you know that you can save those to your computer. Thankfully, we widely recognize <laughs> that reflection is important in the learning process. Um, but we don't necessarily connect that need for reflection, that need for quiet spaces, with digital spaces. We think rather perhaps of providing areas in the library, perhaps, or, or rooms that are put aside for uh, in physical spaces uh, to help people think. Uh, and perhaps get together in small groups and co-construct their understanding of their learning. But in an ideal world, and I think this was this is a, 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 um, a quote from the links that I've just shared in the chat, we would perhaps think as well about how we provide digital spaces for this sort of activity, particularly because a lot of our thinking is being mediated by digital objects. So these may be PDFs that have been shared, there may be images and visualizations, there may be um, conversations under a, a hashtag such as LC uh, where we're actually sort of coming across learning artifacts. Um, and the, this particular tweet caught my attention um, and this really struck home to me, and I'd be interested to know if it, if it means something to you as well. Um, this was about, you know, when we're thinking about designing for learning, we need to be thinking about giving students opportunities uh, to experience the web in meaningful ways, um, and giving them spaces, playground spaces, where they can better understand <coughs> how and where to go to think. And for us, clearly, in a language learning context, Mahara was part of, of that, um, which is why I shall tell you a little bit about how and why we use it. Um, but I think there's a wider point here. It's not just product specific. So Mahara is an open source um, product, and uh, there are many other e-portfolios out there. So although my focus will be on the one that we use, there are other tools out there. But providing the experience of managing your permissions, and managing um, the visibility of what you're doing and what you're reflecting on, these are really valid ways of giving people experiences that help them to form a better and clearer idea and a better insight into what it means to be an effective digital citizen. Um, I was particularly attracted to some work, a big European project that was published by Brandsai et al. in 2010, uh, and what he describes as the, the, new, uh, the new digital divide. 
because we've had this binary hanging around us for a long time um, around people either know how to use and, and how to behave in the digital or they don't. And, and what surfaced from this particular piece of work was that in fact, um, and let's just share with you uh, a link to that, um, but in fact it's not as straightforward as that. In fact there are, um, just, sorry I'll just pop this in the chat, the, the, it's far more granular. The differences between us when we come to use the, um, the digital are greater than we perhaps realise in terms of access, equity, um, ability to understand the impact or possible impacts of what we do online. Um, and providing a sort of sheltered space where we can experiment can be very, very helpful. Um, so for us within language learning, Mahara provided that space. So let's tell you a little bit about Mahara itself. Well, as I think I mentioned, the, the reason we chose Mahara was because of its integration with Moodle. Um, maybe we can come to our yes and no um, arrows again uh, on just underneath the participants list here. Um, perhaps you could just put a tick in the box there to tell us if you've used Mahara before and just get a, an idea of whether we have any Mahara users actually in the room. Jin has. Okay, great. Thank you. and Marie and Marilise. Great. Okay, so some of you will be familiar, and Richard, yes, of course, as uh, a seasoned Mahara user. So the, the, the tool itself is very much a way of um, providing a space that, because it's built around the premise that when you go into Mahara, only you need to see what you're doing. Um, and, and so it, it literally is like going into your own room, a quiet space. Um, now, I used Mahara recently on a student experience project to give the students an opportunity to um, explore um, digital technologies we use in language learning and to give us some feedback. And that little quote at the bottom there actually comes from one of these students. And I was quite taken aback by her comment. It's incredible we don't think about online spaces that much, seeing as they play such a big role in our lives. And I guess, you know, if you've grown up with digital spaces and always had the social media around, around you and actually have sort of totally bought into that, then thinking about it, is, it, it, it tends to be at a sort of superficial nature. It doesn't tend to be in any critical way. Um, and I really feel this is something that we as educators can help to support by encouraging people to explore spaces and then thinking and talking about the nature of those spaces. Um, so everything by default, once you go through into Mahara from Moodle, is controlled by the user themselves. Um, not by a teacher, it's focused solely on who you are when you move into that interface. And then what you can do is create sort of widget-based web pages and you can pull those together into collections which you can share and you control the permissions on who can see them. You can make them totally open and visible uh, from the outside world. You can make them visible only to one or two people that you name, that you know within the system. And you can make them available just for a limited period of time. So you have um, a tool here that actually takes you through that journey of thinking about um, the sorts of things you want to do. What is your digital presence? How do you want yourself to be portrayed? Um, here's another collection of links in the chat. So Mahara itself, as I say, is an open source tool. There's a link there to the main website. Um, I happen to have set up recently a Mahara Users Midlands group. And we take Midlands to be um, everywhere from below Scotland to above London. And, and it goes out to the west and the east as well, as Richard, as Richard knows, because he's joined us as well. Um, so 
we have um, uh, qu quite a wide UK uh, membership group and our activities, although some have taken place face to face, we were recently met up at the ALT conference in Warwick, um, most of our activities will probably sit online um, to, to save some of the travel and to make the most of the time that we have. Um, so there are some links there. You'll also see a set of tutorials that uh, we make to actually help our students explore the spaces and find their ways, ways around um, into the spaces and see what sorts of things they can do. So Mahara itself, as I've said, um, these are some of the reasons why uh, we connect. There, it is a UK community, there is a UK community, the MUM group, the Mahara Users Midlands group is the group um, that we've recently started, but it also, it's also an international community of users. It was actually, um, it actually arose and was born in New Zealand. Uh, there's a very strong French user base and German user base and uh, Australian, South African, it literally uh, exists across and around the world. So it has a, a very wide um, range of cultures as well, exploring and playing with, uh, with Mahara, quite active groups. That little logo you can see at the bottom, Shakespeare with his huge hammer there, is, is the uh, logo that represents uh, Mahara uses Midlands, so it pulls together our industrial heritage and our cultural heritage. Um, and thank you, Richard. Yes, please do chime in if you uh, are a, uh, a Mahara user. Please do add to what I'm uh, explaining here. Um, it is LTI, so it is possible to integrate it with other um, with other um, VLEs. So for a user, when you arrive in Mahara, you see something like this, and we, don't, we haven't, this is just a screenshot of our own Mahara, which we haven't customised, it is possible to customise and brand it and everything else, um, but for us it's a simple tool which um, now our Moodle is actually a, a Moodle Rooms Moodle, um, we get free of charge because all Moodle Rooms um, accounts have free hosting of uh, Mahara. Um, so it's, it's a low cost way of actually helping people acquire digital skills and think more deeply about their digital presence and their online identity. Um, and it, for us it's used contextually um, in language learning and it's actually used to assess um, language learning because what we do is we ask our students to reflect on their experiences of language learning uh, using Mahara and then sharing that for assessment. So we look at their narratives for language learning. Um, I mentioned uh, that you'll be able to find that in the Alt C blog because the work we did on Mahara, if you if you Google Mahara and McKinnon, the Alt C blog is the post that will summarise everything for you. Um, the student project that I mentioned earlier, which is the Warwick International Higher Education Academy student project, there's a set of links here um, that show you how the students felt about the experience of using Mahara um, and the experience of using digital technologies generally. We used it as a reflective space uh, for the students to uh, come back to when they had experienced different technologies for language learning and for them to, to share with us their experiences. Um, so you'll see there there's a, a Padlet that has the collections on. Um, and there's also a slide share um, document uh, that you might find of, of interest that sort of summarises the design of that project, which was really about giving people the time and space to think. Um, ownership, yes, was particularly relevant and ownership is something that was discussed by Maha Bali and um, uh, Audrey Waters on Twitter from those links that you've perhaps already um, seen that I shared earlier. So I'm going to move to my final slide and then we'll see if we can also go and have a look online. So when we think ownership, well, not all of our students, and I'm, and I'm sure they wouldn't be terribly happy if we told them, right, you need to go and 
buy space on a blog in order to think about your um, think about your learning. Uh, not all of our students, and I say this as a mother of a, a recently graduated student, have the sort of money that they can, you know, swap eating for for paying a subscription to a blog. So having a low cost and uh, safe environment to actually go through the processes of making a digital identity uh, and then perhaps deciding what to share with whom and how to get feedback from people. Uh, there are free blogging tools indeed, Adam, there are plenty out there, but generally people don't rush off and use them without having a purpose. So, and, and LinkedIn is indeed free, but is it a thinking space? I think you know, there are all these aspects. The beauty of, of Mahara is that it doesn't matter where you're blogging or where you're thinking, where you're putting your digital artifacts if you're collecting them across the web. You can curate them and pull them together and display them um, through Mahara. Uh, and you can decide who you want to see them and for how long even you want to share them. So uh, I, I, what I really think is that, uh, and this is a personal perspective, and please do feel free to um, add your perspectives and, and let's uh, have a discussion around this, is that we have a responsibility, just as we do in terms of providing suitable accommodation, physical accommodation for learning, um, we need to be starting to think about whether we provide suitable digital accommodation for learning because that actually is the virtual environment is where a lot of learning increasingly is happening, particularly if you're on um, vocational courses or you're perhaps involved in um, activities that mean you have to travel and uh, the virtual is perhaps the one environment that you can connect to. So space that is safe, space that is secure in lots of ways, as Audrey says in her post here, to think and write and be, which I think is particularly crucial um, to what we, um, what we ask our students to do. They need to, particularly in language learning, and, and that's a link there to our um, context, the learner is actually navigating their way to a, an additional identity as they're learning a language or another culture. Now, in order to do that, they have to explore their own identity. Where are they now? Who are they now? And who are they now? They're a, um, a speaker of more than one language. Now, they're a participant in more than one cultural interchange and cultural discourse. And how does that change over time? Those sorts of considerations are a really valid academic inquiry um, and cause us to reflect on how we behave online in lots of other ways as well. Rather than um, trying to teach these skills, it's a much more powerful, I would argue, more powerful way is to experience those skills, experience what goes wrong and what goes well uh, when you start to behave, when you start to navigate online settings and online environments. Um, so whether it's whether it's Mahara, Pebblepad, or any of the many many tools that are out there, Google Sites, um, we've had LinkedIn mentioned, we've had um, uh, many of the free blogging tools, Blogger, etc. Um, all of these tools obviously are out there. Once we put them to a purpose, and a purpose that is meaningful, then we start the discussion and, and we start to realize that we're changing and we're thinking perhaps a bit more deeply um, about the experience of living in both a physical and a digital world. And all the exciting bits within those two worlds happen at the edges of the two. How do these affect, how does our digital presence affect our physical experience of life, how does controlling our digital presence enhance or impact on our physical life, and how can we make it possible for students to experience 
these sort of deeply personal things in a way that isn't just thinking about the teaching, that gives them room to think about their learning and permission to think about their learning too. Um, so, so that was really the purpose of starting this discussion. Um, what I, what I will do, uh, if that's okay with you, Marin, is just briefly um, share our own Mahara with you so that you can see it on the screen. And let's just jump into that. Great, yeah, that's coming through now. So this is our... Great, okay. So, so this is Languages at Work. This is our um, platform, our Moodle platform. Um, which you can see here, and on my customizable landing page here, I've moved Mahara right up to the top. Now, let's, here we go. So this is our Mahara environment. Um, obviously, the students don't see the admin tab, but they get these three, these three main tabs, which are actually the equivalent as well of the tabs under here. But as I say, this is, this is customizable. You can change this if you wish to. But three main aspects. So there's an area where you're actually controlling your content. So because the connection is direct with our own Moodle, if students post to a forum or they submit an assignment, they get a link within Moodle that says export to ePortfolio. So if they want to then reflect on that activity, they can push it directly through into their own space and create a reflective post about it, um, however they wish to do so. Under portfolio, this is the area where they create their own pages and collections. And uh, I'll show you one of those just briefly before we finish. And finally, there's also a social space. So you don't have to be lonely. It's not just a quiet place where you can go and cry. It can be a place where you can set up your groups. So you can even set up you know, a group for basketball players learning Russian. Um, it gives the students that autonomy to actually create their own groups rather than um, have to follow uh, what we think is suitable for them. Um, let me just show you uh, within my collections. So collections are just groupings of pages. A page essentially can connect um, whole sets of information. Um, so here we've got, oh, let's, let's jump into this page here. Um, so here we've got a set of um, pages about how we use technology within the School of Modern Languages and Cultures. So you can see, if I scroll down, and this probably doesn't render as well in the old Blackboard Collaborate as it would do in Ultra, I'm afraid. Um, so I won't scroll too much because I know it's really, really annoying. <laughs> but you, as you can see, you, you can incorporate um, lots of different types of digital artifacts. So this can be video, it can be um, images, it can be slides and collections of pictures. Um, so there are lots of different digital artifacts you can put together as well as adding just text to reflect on them and uh, to provide then a collection of pages that may be of interest. And you can also then go um, to the sharing settings uh, for this, and you can then decide who can see it and whether it's publicly available or otherwise. So that's the sort of thing that can be created uh, in Mahara. So finally, what I want to do just in the text chat again is to, um, let's just stop the sharing for a second, um, is to share with you some links to our uh, connecting places because we do have a Mahara Midlands Google Plus community, which is open to anybody. So please do come and join us if you uh, wish to find out more and uh, to continue the conversation. Um, Mahara Org also has a, a community area, which is obviously much broader. Um, and there is a mum group on Mahara.org, as well as lots and lots of resources uh, to explore those sorts of things more. Um, extensively. So our time is about up and uh, yes, I'm very happy to come back to any queries or questions or please do connect with me. I'm at Warwick Language on Twitter and I'm always very happy to connect and uh, 
share your ideas and thoughts oh, about thinking that spaces. Was a great presentation. Or Thank you else. very much, Teresa. What an inspiring <laughs> session that had really got all of us um, properly thinking. Um, if you'd like to join me in putting your hands together for a really big round of applause for Teresa and a really wonderful webinar. So thank you very much.